Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, crossover slopes and crossovers in general. So as always, uh, a quick note, I am not a professional, I'm just a hobbyist. And if I'm making any mistakes, just pop them in the comments and we're going to figure something out because nobody's perfect, me included. So crossovers and slopes. <clears throat> Why do we need crossovers? We need them for two main reasons. One is to blend the drivers nicely together. So let's say subwoofer and mid bass. And number two is to have some kind of protection for the driver from over excursion. So we want to limit, for example, bass coming into our mid ranges or tweeters. So crossovers, there's different types of crossovers. If we're going to go to, for example, our DSP, we have Butterworth, Bezel, Chebyshev, and Lincoln's Riley. Uh, and there probably there are some others as well. So Lincoln's Riley is the most popular one. And everybody's saying like, oh, Lincoln's Riley, 24 dB per octave, just slap on and and move on. We're going to look at that as well, but what those 24 dB per octave means. Uh, a good thing for you to think in octaves. So octave is uh, doubling or halving our frequency. If we take, for example, 200 hertz, an octave up is going to be 400 hertz. An octave up from that is going to be 800 hertz and so on and so on. And if we go down, if we take 200, an octave down is going to be 100, another octave down is going to be a 50, and 25, and so on and so on. So octave is doubling or halving of the frequency. So let's have a look at some slopes. We have 6 dB, 12 dB, 24 dB, and there's others as well. So what does that mean? If I choose a crossover point at 200 hertz, this one, that means that uh, at that crossover point, the frequency response is going to be minus 3 dB already. It's not going to be, <coughs> <coughs> apologies, I'm still sick. It's not going to be somewhere here or somewhere that is going to be crossover point is going to be minus 3 dB. And then depending on the slope is the steepness, how uh, fast the signal is attenuated. So, for example, 6 dB per octave, that means that if we take 200 hertz and 400 hertz, it's going to be 6 dB down. Another octave, 800 hertz, is going to be 12 dB down, and so on and so on. So, the steepest slope, for example, 24 dB, the one that we like the most in car audio, that means that at 200 hertz, it's going to be minus 3 dB, and at 400 hertz, it's going to be minus 24 dB. That means it's very, very steep. Yeah? And why do we like uh, Linkwitz Riley? We like it because if we have, let's imagine that the green one is a subwoofer and the red one is mid bass. And if we have the same slopes, it's going to sum flat. And it's going to be the same if using two 6 dB slopes or if you're using to 12 dB slopes or to 24 dB slopes, the one that we like the most, is going to sum flat. And that is exactly what we want. We want a flat frequency response. Now, if we take some other um, slopes, for example, bezel, if I take bezel, it looks, it looks similar to 12 dB Linkwitz Riley, but it's not, it's a bit different. So if I take, say, bezel, both of them are the same, but if I'm going to sum them, it's not going to be flat. And it applies to others as well. So <coughs> others, they might be flat, but the phase is going to be different and that kind of stuff. So phase is another thing that for Linkwitz Riley, Every uh, order or every 6 dB per octave slope adds uh, 90 degrees of phase. 
So for example, if you take two 6 dB, they, at this point, they're gonna be 90 degrees out of phase. If we are taking two slopes 12 dB, they're gonna be 180 degrees out of phase. That means that if we are going to sum these and they will be wired correctly, this is gonna be a null point, like a cancellation. But if we flip the polarity of either the mid base, either the subwoofer, then it's gonna sum flat. And once we arrive at 24 dB per octave, the polarity is gonna, if both of them are same polarity, they're gonna sum flat. That's why we like the 24 dB Linkus Riley slopes. That's why we use them in core audio. However, what happens if you have slightly different slopes? If I have, let's say, 12 dB per octave on mid base, and I have 24 dB per octave on subwoofer, yeah, which is sometimes it happens. Then if you try to sum them, they're not gonna sum flat again. I'm gonna be a peak and a dip. They're not gonna sum flat. That's why we want, <coughs> apologies. That's why we want the slopes to be exactly the same. So now let's uh, go to a real world situation because the speakers are not like that. Speakers don't have a flat frequency response like that. Speakers have something like this. So this is my uh, mid bass driver in the door. So everybody says, okay, starting point 80 hertz uh link to trial 24 db per octave just slap it on mid base and uh, and subwoofer and it's gonna be fine for now so let's try this is my mid base driver <coughs> <coughs> i'm gonna eq it but i'm gonna eq it only from 80 hertz up to one and a half k because well i'm gonna cross it over at 80 so it doesn't matter right okay let's see what happens so this is after eq then i apply 80 hertz crossover and it's gonna go down like this so this is before uh crossover this is with the crossover yeah and now if i'm gonna compare this the frequency response of the speaker with an ideal 80 hertz crossover is going to look like this yeah as you can see here i'm missing stuff why if i take a look at the original frequency response here <coughs> i have a null i have a cancellation in this part in my car it's uh, from the doors everybody has it in every car so here it's not that nice no uh, if I want to see what kind of slope it is, I tried an ideal 100 hertz crossover point, which looks something similar. Yeah. So this is the point that I would like to talk about acoustical and electrical crossovers. So as you can see, this mid bass the frequency response of the driver itself, it's crossed at 80 hertz. But this ideal is at 100 hertz. So they're not the same. So the thing that you need to make sure to put in your heads that acoustical crossover is not the same as electrical. Yeah, because acoustical is what we measure with the microphone. But electrical is only this, what you put here, what the process processor applies to the original signal. Yeah, so if I apply to my regular mid base 80 hertz crossover point, it's gonna give me a hundred hertz acoustical crossover point. Yeah, so it's not the same. Now, how do I get, at least try to get, this 80 hertz ideal? 
Well, I can try to lower the crossover point for the mid bass driver. So let's put 60 hertz. And I'm going to have this. Not ideal, but a little bit better. Yeah. But again, this is because of the cancellation. It's not ideal. So let's go back to the one that people always say, slap 80 hertz and see what happens. So that's 80 hertz on my mid bass. Now let's go to the subwoofer. That's my subwoofer. And this is after, uh, sorry, it's not EQ, after crossover. XO at 80 hertz. There we go. So that's the crossover 80 hertz to my applied to my subwoofer. Now, if you look at this, this is not going to sum. It's going to be a dip in here and it's not going to sum nice. So if I follow the general consensus that 80 hertz for both, it's not going to sum and I will be lacking in this area. So what can I do? I put my mid bass in the kicks. So this is a response from the kicks compared to the doors. So as you can see, the cancellations that were here and here are much, much, much smaller. And I have a more output in general. So after EQ, I'm going to EQ it flat from 40 till one and a half. Now, why from 40? If I'm crossing it at 80, I need one octave down to be as flat as possible. This will make sure that my crossover is going to be close to ideal. So I'm EQing it down to 40. I'm applying the same 80 hertz crossover. Yeah. And it's going to look like this. So now, if I compare this with the ideal 80 hertz, it's much, much, much better. It's not perfect. It's not ideal. I could play with it, but it's much better. If I compare it to the door response, which was this, you see this, this big, big gap? That one fills it up because I had a flat response down to 40 hertz. That's why you need that extra thing. And now if I'm going to try to sum this with a sub, it's going to sum better. Now, one thing, extra thing that we need to think about uh, when we're dealing with bottom end is driver excursion. If I take WinISD, okay, so this is just totally random driver it doesn't really matter which one that's a frequency response it's modeled and i'm gonna go to cone excursion and i'm gonna have a look at this so for example i chose just a random box size and signal i'm feeding 35 watts and i'm having excursion at uh, three mil max after below 50 hertz or so, okay? So now if I apply a high pass crossover, let's say, imagine that this is a mid bass driver and we do 80 hertz crossover points. I'm gonna apply this and you see how the excursion went down. So this is before, this is after. So the filter, it does what it's supposed to do. It cuts all the low notes, all the bass. And now, so without any filters, I could play on this driver 35 watts. Now, if I apply the filter, I can put, let's put 100 watts. 100 watts, and it's still under 3 mil which is perfect. That means <coughs> the higher crossover point you put on the driver, the more power you can put into it, assuming that the driver can take that power if it's rated to take that power. So if this driver would say, uh, 
rated, uh, let's say 50 watts RMS, obviously I'm not gonna put 100 watts to it because it's gonna melt, yeah? So there is no point of having such a high crossover point for it. But if this driver, let's say, takes 100 watts thermal with high pass of 80 Hertz, I can easily achieve it. Now, if this driver, let's say it's rated 150 watts, let's put 150 watts, is gonna go over those three mil, 100 Hertz, yeah? So what we can do, if I am gonna change the crossover point, let's say 90 Hertz, see, it's going down to three mil again. <coughs> So this is literally playing uh, with how low you want to play your drivers, how much they can take it. So it's the same, like if I would have this mid base in the door, yeah? And as I mentioned before, I put 80 hertz, uh, it's not ideal, I need a bit more. So if I'm going to lower the crossover point to 60, I'm gonna have more output, but then the question is, will that driver is gonna handle it? If I'm gonna try to EQ it a tiny bit more, if I'm gonna try to push this 70 Hertz up by let's say three or four dB, that's extra excursion. Will that driver gonna take it? Probably not, probably is gonna bottom out. So it's, it's knowing the capabilities of your driver, and knowing how low can they play. And it applies exactly the same for mid-range or the tweeter. <coughs> so when they say uh, cross the tweeter at two times or three times FS, why is that? If I'm gonna look at this, imagine this is a tweeter, yeah? And imagine this is 30, is no, it's, it's a very bad example. But basically what you want, the crossover point, the 24, if you're using 24 dB slopes, the 24 dB down, you want your FS to be very, very low, so it wouldn't play at FS. So that means that's, that you need a full octave after the, FS to put your crossover point. If you are gonna put 12 dB per octave slope, you need at least three times FS because it's gonna be more shallower slope and your tweet is gonna play more uh, into the upper mid range and we don't want that. So the shallower the slope, the higher the crossover point is supposed to be. So if I take, for example, this, bam, six and 24, see? So if, <coughs> if the FS is 100 Hertz, yeah? It's 24 dB down, it's gonna be fine. But if I'm gonna put six dB per octave slope, is gonna play 100 Hertz and we don't want that. So that's why the crossover point is gonna be two or three octaves uh, down, yeah? So it's playing with, again, your driver capabilities and how low you want them to play. If you want your drivers to play really, really low, then remember this, the power handling so if I'm gonna remove this high pass altogether, what I need is lower the power. So let's say 35 watts. So if I have a driver with no high pass filter, it can still play everything just on very, very low power. So that's why like if you have a uh, sound quality competitions and stuff and people say oh we're using 6 db slopes or my driver is playing very very low because they don't play them loud 
like 80 db 85 db because that's all you need for competition but if you want your drivers to play really really loud if you like almost spl then you need to cross your drivers very high in order to limit the excursion <coughs> yeah so sorry i'm still sick for the past few weeks but it is what it is so i don't know if it helped anybody if it did again happy days if it didn't again you know more than i do so my tip is know your driver numbers know the fs uh know the excursion try to use win isd and simulate your driver knowing how much power you can give it where it peaks the from from what frequency the excursion peaks so for example if i'm gonna cross this driver at 200 hertz basically all of this doesn't matter for me yeah so knowing your drivers and knowing what you want to achieve you want those slopes uh to match the ideals and remember electric crossover is not the same as acoustical one and if we just slap random crossovers on random drivers it's not going to be ideal is it probably will do the job but again from my example where i had uh this one and subwoofer is going to be a gap and you can have if i'm gonna put a low pass filter here let's say one and a half k is going to be exactly the same situation this is going to be like a, a massive massive slope <coughs> like maybe 40 db and it's not going to blend well in order for the drivers to blend well you need nice slopes and now uh if you're using if you want to use shallow slopes it can be done with between mid-range and tweeter because usually they're close together if you have them in a pillars or on the on the dash they're close to each other and they're gonna blend well but if you're gonna use let's say 6 db per octave filters on uh, a mid-range and on mid base and your mid base is in the door and mid range is in the dash it's not going to sound good because you're going to have both of the drivers playing uh probably more than an octave together and that sound is going to be coming from the mid range on the dash and from the mid base in the doors that's why you're going to have like imaging issues and that kind of stuff I was talking about the, the slopes themselves and about the phase, how uh, slope affects the phase. If you want to see that, uh, check my, probably was the first video about phase issues in cars. <coughs> and uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and good luck with all your tuning.